Hey, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me for part two of this two-part video, What Makes a Song? In part one of this video, I talked to you about the different parts of the song. I showed you how to identify what an intro, a verse, a hook, a bridge, and an outro is. And I talked to you about what those things are and described how they're used throughout the song. But in part two, now we're gonna talk about the types of songs and the structure of these types of songs or how these songs are put together. You should have seen part one already, but if not, please take a moment to go back and watch part one. Part one is gonna set up the next part of this video, so it's really important that you've seen it. Once you watch it, come on back to this and we can get started. If you have already seen part one, let's just roll right into the next part. So in part one, we identify the parts of a song as being the intro, the verse, the hook, the bridge, and the outro. Now that you know all the parts of the song, we're gonna put them all together. So you may have seen this or some variation of this before. The way the structure is written out is varied, but the idea is all the same. So we're gonna look at structure like this. We're gonna call A our verse, B is gonna be our hook, C is gonna be our bridge, in is gonna mean intro, out is gonna mean outro. So keep these things in mind. You can take note of it, write it down on a little piece of paper if you want to, but just keep it in your head. It's gonna be very important for how I describe the types of songs. So now that we've kind of outlined what those things mean for us, I'm gonna tell you four categories of songs that I came up with and their typical structures. So those four categories are going to be, number one, a ballad. Number two, a party or a club banger song. Number three, a prelude or interlude. And number four, a story or freestyle format. So the first structure, the first type of song, a ballad, um, that structure is gonna vary. So one has an intro and an outro, the other doesn't, but the layout is exactly the same. So this means one kind of song may be structured in A, B, A, B, C, B, out, or intro, verse, hook, verse, hook, bridge, hook, outro, or the same thing without the intro or the hook. So that's gonna look like A, B, A, B, C, B. And again, that is verse, hook, verse, hook, bridge, hook. So this structure represents more of the old school way of songwriting. It's somewhat been phased out over time as people gravitate more toward writing shorter songs and it generally represents what is known as a ballad. Now, when most people hear the word ballad, they think that it means slow song, but that's not always the case. So a ballad describes a type of song that can be slower than a club banger. And it has a simple storyline, especially one that deals with romantic relationships or just relationships in general, but it focuses on one very particular situation or experience. So a ballad has a clear meaning and it has clear content and there's one specific thing that you want the audience to take away or there's one specific thing that you learned that you really want your listener to understand and hopefully learn from your mistakes as well. It's that kind of song. So this song probably won't have nearly as much bass as a club banger, but it doesn't have to be as slow as you may have a preconceived notion of it being. So um, this type of song you can really build a story with and still have it be catchy, but it's very meaningful as well. So that is a ballad. The next type of song, the party or club banger type of song, that format is going to have two variations as well. So the first variation is going to be a, B, A, B, or verse, hook, verse, hook. The second variation of the party or club banger is going to be B, A, B, A, B, or hook, verse, hook, verse, hook. So this is probably the most common structure today as far as songs are concerned. And as you can see, there are two or three hooks and then there are two verses within the song. Um, I associate this structure with the party or club banger type of song because you don't really need a clear cut message. 
it's simple, it's repetitive, and it's easy to remember. So you could almost lump this together with a kind of chanty type of song because you can literally talk about anything you want to as long as it's catchy and as long as it's simple and something that's easy to remember. So that's the main thing to take away from a club or a party club banger type of song. You want it to be simple, repetitive, easy simple repetitive and easy those three things and in that order so um with this song you pick a general theme most people talk about money or they talk about how much better they are or i don't know a shoe collection a car collection anything you want you pick a general theme and then you stick to that general theme so your song has some kind of cohesiveness about it you want to think about i don't know Instantly what comes to mind is artists like Nicki Minaj or uh, Lil Uzi Vert or Migos. They're really good about coming up with catchy little hooks and, you know, they just have simple verses that don't seem to really mean anything, but it kind of connects to the hook. So you can definitely have a lot more fun with this song. It's different from a ballad in a sense that it doesn't have to necessarily have one storyline that comes together. Of course, you want a general theme, but it doesn't have to be quite so serious in that sense. You just really want something that people are going to easily remember, that they can dance to, that they can move to, and then they, and that they can repeat over to themselves. So keep that in mind when you are writing a party or club banger song and keep this format in mind as well. The next thing is going to be a prelude or interlude. Now this is an even simpler format compared to the uh, club banger type of format. The prelude or interlude format is going to be A, B or verse hook. Now this is the kind of thing or the kind of structure you'll see on preludes and interludes which are included on projects or albums. A prelude or an interlude, it's not considered a full song. So a prelude is an introduction or it'll introduce a topic or set the mood for the next song that's about to come up. An interlude can do the same thing, but it's going to serve as a kind of break between a bigger picture. So think of an interlude as an intermission. It's a break or an in-between for a larger plot. So that being said, you can use this format for very small or short topics that you kind of want to touch on, but maybe you don't feel like fleshing it all the way out the way that you would with a full-fledged song. So keep that in mind for an interlude. That's what an interlude is. The last format I'm going to share with you um, is going to be for a story or a freestyle. Now, a story is just what it sounds like. It's a storyline. Um, you could also call this format the freestyle format. And with this structure, it's just A. A. It's just A. And the A stands for verse because it's just an ongoing topic that you keep building and building and building on. So you want to use this format when you have a lot to say, but you don't necessarily feel like you have to try to catch the attention of everybody. It's more so of a directional thing or kind of like a declaration type of song. So you're telling a story. You can start at any point you want to, as long as that progression of the story makes sense, right? So there's one main theme and you're basically treating it like a train of thought. That's probably the best way to think of it. So in the sense of it being a freestyle, you can direct it at one person or one audience. So when you think freestyle, think of like Nicki Minaj versus Remy Ma or Drake versus Meek Mill when those beefs were going on. They had these freestyles come out. They were considered songs, but it didn't have to have that A, B, A, B, A, B structure because it was directed at somebody specific, right? It was getting out some emotions. It was letting out some thoughts. There wasn't one main section that kept repeating throughout. You can make it a declaration, just letting people know what's going on in your life or a type of announcement of what you're about to do. That's usually what people use these kind of formats for. So either way, there's no pressure to conform to a specific structure on this one. Now, the one thing I will warn you about with this type of format, you want to stay away from having a monotone delivery. And what I mean by that is, even though you're not switching between a hook 
and a verse and a bridge or an intro and outro, you still want to make sure that you're switching up your melody or switching up the way that you're saying your words. Because if it's monotone, if it stays like this the whole time and this is how you rap and that's how the song is going and it goes like this for two or three minutes, well, that's really boring not only for you but also for your listeners. Now, if you have some dedicated fans who just want to listen to you say anything because they really like you as an artist, that's cool. But in general, you're going to get bored with it and listeners will get bored with it. So just make sure that you're changing up your tone and your melody when you're using this kind of format. You don't want to keep it all in one space. You can be as creative as you want to. So don't feel like you can only do one thing just because it's one long verse or there's no defined hook or bridge or outro. You know what I mean? Well, that wraps up this video on what makes a song. I hope that you've learned a lot and I hope that you have a better understanding of the different parts of a song, the different types of songs and the different structures and how to put a song together. So now I hope you feel definitely more prepared in um, you know, your journey as a songwriter. And I hope that you can use some of what you've learned today to create a nice song of your own. If you feel like you need more practice identifying the parts of a song, the types of a song, or the structure of a song, again, please feel free to play part one or part two back as many times as you need to. Um, pick out songs on the radio or choose your favorite songs of the artists that you're listening to. See if you can identify which parts of the songs are in there and what type of song it might be and the structure of the song. Again, if you want to check your progress, Google Play usually does a pretty good job of having the correct lyrics and the correct outline of the songs defined if you look up the lyrics on there link so yeah check your progress on that but again thank you so much for watching this video i hope i helped you a little bit or a lot either way if you like what you heard in this video today please give me a big thumbs up and then leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what you like or ask me any additional questions i do read those and i will make videos for you in the future but you gotta let me know what you don't know so i can know to tell you what you want to know so anyway I'm being a little silly but if you want to see more content like this definitely click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the post notifications which is that little bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified each and every time I post a new video each week but as always thank you so much for tuning in with me until next time peace hope you learned a lot when you think about the structure of a song, I want you to kind of compare it to how you would approach writing an essay for school. So remember your teacher would always tell you that you have an intro, you have a body, and then you have a conclusion. Well, think about your approach to the song in the same kind of way. And the parts of the song are actually labeled somewhat similarly, but.